Good morning and welcome to our service of remembrance here at St Lawrence and All Saints Eastwood. You're very welcome if you are watching us online this morning. Our service is going to begin with the hymn of God our help in ages past. Plowshares 
and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. But they shall sit under their own vines and under their own fig trees, and no one shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So today is a day for remembering. Remembering the sacrifices made by so many men and women in two world wars and in subsequent conflicts. The freedom which we enjoy today was bought with a very heavy price and that must always be recognised and remembered. Perish the day that we ever stop remembering. But this is not only a day for remembering, it's also a day for action. It's a day for committing ourselves afresh to peace. Peace in the widest sense of that word. Peace on a global scale between warring factions in so many places around the world. Peace closer to home between people of opposing views, political, religious, or whatever. Peace in our own community and neighbourhood. Peace within our own families. And, of course, peace in our own hearts. Peace is so desperately needed in the world of 2020. But it's very easy to sit back and let other people do the work of peacemaking. It's easy to say to ourselves, I can't do anything, so I'll leave it up to the politicians, the diplomats, and the mediators. And it's also very easy to kind of expect God to do the work of peacemaking. How many times do we say or think, God, why can't you do something about all the war and fighting and violence in the world? Well, let's be careful that we don't ask that question as a kind of a cover for what we really mean, which is often, you do something about it, God, so that I don't have to get involved. There's a song, or maybe it's him, I'm not sure, which begins with the words, let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Peace doesn't begin out there somewhere. It must begin in here, inside us, in our hearts. When we know the peace of God in our own lives, then that will spread outwards to our families and friends, our neighbours, our work colleagues, and who knows how much further as well. Never underestimate the effect that knowing peace in our own lives could ultimately have on the world around us. And of course everyone can pray, and everyone can pray for peace. St Paul wrote to Timothy, I urge then that requests, prayers, intercessions and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. We can all pray for peace, and pray for peace is something that we need to persist with and not give up. So, as we spend time today remembering the sacrifices of the past, let's also be willing to work and pray for peace. Our parents and grandparents made sacrifices for us. Let us also be prepared to sacrifice our time, our energy and our abilities to work for peace in the world, in our nation, in our communities, in our families, and most of all, in our own hearts. Now we come to our intercessions. Let us pray. Let us pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict and ask that God may give us peace. For the service men and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God. May God give peace. 
for those who love them in death as in life, offering the distress of our grief and the sadness of our loss. May God give peace. For all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family, friends, and all who pray for their safe return, May God give peace. For civilian women, children and men whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatreds of humanity, may God give peace. For peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free, May God give peace. For all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace, may God give peace. Now let us pray together the words that our Saviour Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now we're going to move towards our act of remembrance, and we're going to have the hymn, I Vow to Be My Country.
So let us now remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who have died for their country in war, those whom we knew and whose memory we treasure, and all who have lived and died in the service of mankind. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Ever-living God, we remember those whom you have gathered from the storm of war into the peace of your presence. May that same peace calm our fears, 
bring justice to all peoples, and establish harmony among the nations. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and, of, and our fellow men and women, that we may help, encourage and comfort others and support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace and welfare of the nations. Let us pray. Lord God our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all humankind in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your Spirit. Give us wisdom. Give us courage. Give us hope. And keep us faithful now and always. Amen. Now the hymn that praise my soul, the King of Heaven. Amen.